Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Ms. Rice, I want, to thank, I want to thank you for being here, Ms. Rice, and I want to tell you, I, I doubt any of the members of this committee that I'm looking at now um, have any idea what you just described, um, but we do realize and recognize courage when we see it, and we want to thank you uh, for what we can imagine is an impossibly difficult task. I want to change gears for just a second. You testified early on that you loved your job. I want you to tell the members of the committee what you love most about your job as a firefighter. Put your sorry microphone. Being in the woods, protecting the forest, fighting fire. And you've done it for how long? Over 20 years. All right. To the extent you feel comfortable, uh, can you tell the members of the committee uh, what harassment slash abuse you experienced? From the perpetrator or just in general? From the perpetrator. Uh, um, he was constantly making comments. He uh, removed me from my office where I had a counterpart to an office back and out of the way where he could come in the office and, and make comments and approach me. He has, uh, the reason I filed was because I was in his office and we were having an argument and he had taken a letter opener and poked my breast, both breasts, with a smile on his face and his arrogant way like he could get away with it and I just stood there in shock. He has cornered me in the bathroom. He has lifted my shirt up. He has stalked me. I would wait till everybody would leave so I could pull in because I work in the field and he would be waiting for me. He called me constantly. He interfered with everything. He stalked me. Miss uh Ms. Lago, uh, Ms. Rice testified that the details of her um, complaint were made public. Why would that possibly happen? Well, it is not permitted. It's the first time that I've heard the details were made public. Uh, per our protocol, only people involved in the investigation. Listen, I, I don't want to be rude, but I, I really don't give a damn about protocol. Do you doubt what Ms. Rice just testified to, that the details of her accusations and allegations were made public? Well, I'm just saying I never heard that before now. I'm just so, saying. So do you, do, do you doubt it is my question. Not whether or not you've heard it. Do you doubt it? No, I don't doubt it. Okay. Well, if it's against protocol, as you say, and you don't doubt that it happened, what have you done about it? I just heard it. I just heard about What are you going to do about it? I'm going to ask what happened following her investigation, who knew about it, and why. Well, if memory serves, uh, her perpetrator was allowed to retire. Is that correct? Had you heard that before today? Yes. Okay. Why? Why was he allowed to retire? When someone's proposed for removal, they have a right to either retire or resign. So what consequences would there be for his misconduct if he was allowed to retire? Um, there could be legal action. Such as? He could be sued. He could be... Privately by her? Yeah. Well, well, yes. what, did, what, what did you all do? You were the employer. We fired What did you do? No, you didn't fire him. He retired. We he, just established that. He retired in lieu of being removed from his job. Well, then why, if there's no difference between retiring and being fired, why didn't you fire him? There must be some benefit to retiring. What is that benefit? You don't have removal on your record. Uh, so you did confer a benefit to him, despite the fact that you don't doubt the allegations that she just made. We don't have an alternative to fire someone and not offer them retirement. Well, I just heard the most glowing account of all of the improvements that have been made over the past eight years, and you mean to tell me that someone can engage in the conduct that Ms. Rice just described and avoid all consequence whatsoever? Per the federal regulations, yes, someone can retire or resign in lieu of being removed. 
Ms. Rice, how long was the uh, investigation ongoing? At least six months. You testified that you were forced to give multiple um, accounts of your harassment slash abuse. Correct. Um, that would be the antithesis to best practices for sex assault victims. So, Ms. Lago, why would victims of sexual harassment or assault be forced to give multiple testimonies or accounts? At first, the issue was referred to law enforcement. Law enforcement referred it to the IG because of the nature of the offense. I'm not sure how far the IG investigation went, so to answer your question, a reason someone might have to give an account more than once is they might have to speak to an OIG investigator because of their investigation, they might have to speak to law enforcement, and if either of those investigations uh, aren't conclusive, then we do a misconduct investigation. Do you agree with what, the, what Ms. Rice described as a crime? Yes, I do. All right. So she would talk to law enforcement first? She spoke to her supervisor. Okay. Referred the issue. Who was the first statement made to? I don't know. All right. Well, let me encourage you to do this in the past when y'all are describing the, the glowing progress that you have made. Making victims give multiple accounts, tell what happened to them multiple times runs afoul of everything every expert in sex assault and sex harassment cases teach. It runs afoul of all of it. So if you can find a way to limit victims to just having to relive it one time, I would encourage you to do so. And if you can share the regulations that allow someone to commit the conduct that she just described, to be conferred the benefit of retirement as opposed to removal, if you could share those regulations with the chairman and the ranking member, I would be most grateful to you. I will do that. Thank you. Thank the gentleman. We'll now recognize